great to be here uh, to recognize the life-saving work of the Brady Center, celebrate the achievements of the Legal Action Project on its 20th anniversary. Let me uh, pick out right, right at the start, I know there's so many in this room, but two Illinois heroes and American heroes, and Jim and Sarah Brady. Ten years ago, a white supremacist with a restraining order against him for domestic violence bought guns and went on a sh shooting spree across Illinois and Indiana, killing two people and injuring nine others. Among those who lost their lives were Juan Jun Yoon, a Korean-American college student, and Ricky Birdsong, the former coach of the Northwestern University Wildcats, shot dead as he jogged near his home with his eight-year-old son and ten-year-old daughter. The project was there to help victims' families seek justice in court by suing the dealers who sold the guns to a man who was forbidden by law to buy them. The Legal Action Project has also assisted the city of Chicago and other cities in their efforts to hold the gun industry accountable for trafficking guns on our streets. I'm sure Sarah and Jim and all of us wish there was no need for the Brady Center. That would really be something to celebrate. But that's not the world we live in. We're shocked by the shooting death just a few blocks from where we're meeting for lunch today at the Holocaust Museum last week, a vicious hate crime in a sanctuary of tolerance. We were horrified by the massacres by gunmen at Columbine High School, Virginia Tech, represented here today, and in my own home state at Northern Illinois University. Sometimes it seems we are so numbed by the scale of such tragedies that we fail to notice the deadly daily toll that guns take on America. This is a sad thing for me to say, but it's a fact. Another school year has passed in the city of Chicago. Thousands of kids have been off to school. 36 of those kids, kids were killed during the course of the school year. It's not the first time that's happened. In fact, it's become, sadly, uh, almost routine that children are being gunned down and killed, school kids in the city of Chicago. But those are the ones who lost their lives. Another 500 students, the equivalent of an entire classroom of students, I'm sorry, the equivalent of many classrooms of students, were wounded by gunfire and could have been uh, victims as well. Ron Huberman heads up our schools and with Mayor Daley, we're gonna deal with this. We're looking at it right now. This is intolerable in America, that in one of the greatest cities on our, in our nation, the children going to school, school-age kids would be so vulnerable to gun violence year after year after year. It has to come to an end. Chicago is far too deadly for a lot of young people. I believe that uh, responsible, law-abiding adults should have a right to own guns, but children have a right to walk to school without being caught in a crossfire of a gang war. Parents have a right to kiss their kids and send them to school without worrying they're sending their children into the line of fire. For the sake of these kids and all of our kids, we need the Brady Center and the Legal Action Project to keep up their fight. Now your work is especially important, and I think you know what's going on on Capitol Hill. I'm sorry to say that uh, we are not marching down a path toward more safe, sensible gun laws in this great nation. Nowadays, we see the gun lobby in its ascendancy. Its friends in Congress even go so far as to claim that the Second Amendment and the Heller decision require us to gut nearly all of our gun laws. If I go through the bills and amendments we have already considered in just a few months in the United States Senate, it is sobering. To think that we would enact legislation which would allow people to bring weapons on Amtrak trains, and that was an amendment that was offered and passed in the United States Senate. To think that we would pass an amendment to allow people to bring guns and firearms into national parks. Sadly, that also was passed. And another that is incredible in the city of Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, an amendment was passed which would basically take away this city's authority, even acting consistent with the Supreme Court Heller decision to have basic regulation of firearms. Now, if you take a look at that decision, many of you have, and read it carefully, you know that even Justice Scalia acknowledged that there was proper regulation of firearms. This amendment, which passed the United States Senate, I'm sorry to say, with strong bipartisan support, would virtually take away from the District of Columbia its authority as a city to make it safe for all the visitors and dignitaries who come to this town. I said, and I, it, it's not anything to joke about, but they literally could not regulate it. 
to keep firearms out of the hands of people who are, have voluntarily committed themselves to mental institutions. You could not keep firearms out of the hands of children or those who couldn't pass a basic vision screening test, and you couldn't even restrict the ownership in homes of 50 caliber weapons. Imagine the dignitaries from all over the world coming to Washington, D.C., this great and beautiful capital, and knowing that lurking behind the curtains in any home could be a person with a 50 caliber weapon who could fire away. That is absolutely unacceptable in America today, and it's sad that it passed in the Senate. I hope that we can stop it from becoming law, and I hope that you'll take this as a clarion call to stand and fight. We are not gonna take this sitting down. We are gonna stand up for sensible gun laws that will protect innocent people, children and adults alike across America. We shouldn't be so numb to the violence. We shouldn't be so deaf to the cries of all the families that beg us to do something to avoid another victim. We shouldn't be beaten down by this lobby because we know what we're standing for, a peaceful America, an America where people can go to work and go to school and visit our national monuments without fear. That is what America is all about. That is what we need to be about in this fight on Capitol Hill. People come from all over the world and visit this great nation, marvel at all the freedoms that we have and all the wonderful things God has bestowed upon us and what we've added by our human work. But many of them leave puzzled by our view of guns and firearms, so much different than their countries. They wonder how 30,000 Americans a year can die from gun violence, and so many can be wounded, so many lives compromised and change. The challenges we face in saving lives and enacting sensible gun laws are daunting, but I want to, want to leave you with two reasons to be hopeful. The first is our President Barack Obama. He understands the Constitution does not give gun traffickers and criminals a license to wage wars in our neighborhoods. The second reason to continue the fight is because of people like Garrett Evans. Garrett Evans is counting on you. Garrett was raised on the south side of Chicago a neighborhood with more than its share of gun violence. He thought he'd be safe from all that when he went away to school. On April 16, 2007, Garrett was sitting in a German class at Virginia Tech, just weeks from graduating with a degree in economics, when a gunman burst in and shot and killed more than half of his classmates. Garrett was shot in both legs on that day, but he survived. These days, he spends a lot of time talking to school kids in Chicago and all across America warning them about the damage that people can cause when they have hate in their heart and guns in their hands. He also keeps in touch with my office. I want to read you just part of an email that he sent me not long ago after we'd, had, after we'd just lost one of these tough gun votes on the Senate floor. Here's what Garrett wrote to me. He said, I know that Senator Durbin is busy, but you have to do one thing for me. Please let him know that I know it is a brutal fight. I'm in the trenches and taking hits in the process. Also let him know, most of all, to never give up hope. He closed by saying this, please let him know that others who have lost loved ones here and myself will never stop fighting. So we need him to never quit. What a message. It's the kind of message that keeps you going. And I hope it keeps us going, moving forward to realize that there are a lot of people across America who share our views. They may not have big packs. They may not be politically articulate. They may not be involved in political campaigns from one end of America to the other. But they value life as we do. They value our freedoms in a responsible way. And they are expecting us to fight back. I know the Brady Center and all of you are not going to give up this fight for sensible gun laws until we win. I'm not going to give it up either. In the name of Jim and Sarah Brady, and of all the people who have been fighting for all these years to have sensible, safe America with gun laws that do make sense, we have to do no more now than we've ever been called on. I'm proud to stand with you in this life and death struggle. We cannot give up. Thank you very much.